Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on polygons and angles. Our objective is to find the sum of the angle measures of a polygon and the measure of one interior angle of a regular polygon. Now, what is a polygon? Well, a polygon is a simple closed figure formed by three or more line segments. The segments intersect only at their endpoints. A map of the United States is shown. List the states that are in the shape of a polygon. Then, list the number of segments that form the polygon. Well, a lot of our states that look like polygons are found out west, so there's a hint for you. Not all, but most. And actually, I'm going to start with one that is, well, North Dakota, or New Mexico. Let's actually look at New Mexico. This looks like a polygon out here. And we can count these segments that form it and go, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back up to eight. So, you know, it's just a sample answer here, but we could say that for our state here, we can have New Mexico, and the number of segments that form that state were eight. Now go ahead and look for some other states, maybe three or four more. Pause the video and see what you can find. When you unpause, there'll be a list of some sample states. Have you paused it yet? Last chance. Now there are a lot of states, and I just listed a couple more. We have Utah. And I counted six, four, and Colorado has four, and Wyoming has four. You could try to count Oregon or even um, North Dakota, which isn't too bad. Ohio is a bit too curvy to count, not necessarily line segments there, but there's plenty of states, even uh, like Kansas-ish, uh, that you could use to count some of these. But again... Our idea here is that a polygon is a simple, closed figure formed by three or more line segments. So you couldn't use Idaho or Montana, as you can see all the curves. Or even, for that matter, I guess Ohio. Since down south in southern Ohio, you have the Ohio River, which is a bit more curvy. One of our key concepts today is the interior angle sum of a polygon. In words... The sum of the measure of the interior angles of a polygon is, in parentheses, n minus 2 times 180, where n represents the number of sides. And you can see the formula, s equals n minus 2 times 180. Now you can use the sum of the angle measures of a triangle to find the sum of the interior angle measures of various polygons. A polygon that is equilateral, all sides are the same length, and equal angular, all angles have the same measure, is called a regular polygon. So a regular polygon, same angles, same side lengths. And by same angles, I mean, of course, all angles have the same measure. So when we look at the triangle, three sides, you can see the sketch, just one triangle there. And so 1 times 180 was 180 degrees. We learned that. Now, a quadrilateral, if you take a quadrilateral and just draw a line from one endpoint to another, you can see that there's one, two triangles. So if you take two times 180, you get 360, and I think that's a pretty common fact for us that a quadrilateral's interior angles add up to 360 degrees. What's not as common are our pentagons and our octagons and our dodecagons. We'll learn what those are here in a few minutes. But if you start at one endpoint and draw as many triangles as you can, you'll draw one, two, three triangles with the pentagon. And three times 180 was 540 degrees. And when you look at our formula here, if you put in the five sides, five minus two gets us three triangles. And likewise, six minus two gets us the four triangles in our next shape. So. That's really where it's coming from. That's how this formula was discovered. So to find the sum of measures of the interior angles of a decagon, now think decagon, think decades, or 10 years in a decade. So a decagon is a polygon with 
10 sides. So we always start with our equation first here, s equals n minus 2 multiplied by 180. Then rewrite it, putting your substitution, making in the 10. 10 minus 2 was 8 times 180 is 1,440 degrees. So the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a decagon is 1,440 degrees. And if you had a decagon in front of you, you would see eight triangles if you tried to draw them. Now find the sum of the interior angles of each polygon. Let's try this ourselves. Well, we're going to always start by writing our formula. So S equals N minus 2 times 180. Now a hexagon has six sides. So we can say S equals, and in parentheses put in the 6 for N, minus 2 multiplied by 180. Now don't try to take shortcuts here. Just keep working in your equation. S equals 4, since 6 minus 2 is 4, multiplied by 180. And 4 multiplied by 180 is 720 degrees. Next, for octagons, well, let's start off with the formula once again. S equals N minus 2 multiplied by 180. Now, the best way to learn these formulas is to write them over and over again. And you have plenty of time when solving these problems to write them over and over again. You don't need to get a sheet of paper out and write these 300 times to memorize it. If you just simply write it down every time you solve a problem throughout these notes and throughout this lesson, you'll learn it much easier than if you just try to go, oh, what was that again? Now, an octagon has eight sides. So we can make our substitution in for n, and that substitution is 8 minus 2 multiplied by 180. And then s equals 8 minus 2 is 6 times 180, and 6 times 180 is 1,080 degrees. Now we have a 15 gon. Now sometimes as we get into larger polygons, or at least more sided polygons, we're going to have something like a 15 gon or an 18 gon. You know, we could call a triangle a 3-gon and a quadrilateral a 4-gon, uh, but we know what a triangle and a quadrilateral are. If this question asks you to find the interior angles of a pentadecagon, you go, I don't know what a pentadecagon is. Well, it's a 15-gon, although pent is 5 and dec is 10, so 5 plus 10 is 15, so maybe you could figure it out, but... Either way, we have a pentadecagon or a 15 gon, and we'll start with our formula. S equals n minus 2 multiplied by 180, and S equals, well, our t n is just 15 minus 2 times 180, and 15 minus 2 is 13, and 13 times 180 is 2,000. 340 degrees. So the key here, learn the equation by using the equation. Now the second part of using this equation is what if you want to find just one angle measurement in the inside, not the sum, but just one. Well, if you're looking for the one interior angle of a regular hexagon as you are in the second example, we still use the same formula. S equals then the n minus 2 times 180. We still made our substitution in and we got 4 times 180, which is 720, for all of the interior angles of a regular hexagon. Now, to find just one what we did, a hexagon has six sides, so we have six equal angles as well. So we took 720 divided by 6 to get 120 degrees. Now let's use those same steps to solve these examples. 
find the measure of one interior angle. The key here is one interior angle, so make sure you read that direction in each regular polygon. And again, the polygon here has to be regular, so all of the angles are equal. Round to the nearest tenth, if absolutely necessary. All right, so let's start off with our formula again, just like we did in our previous examples. S equals n minus 2 multiplied by 180. Now we have S equals, well, an octagon has 8 sides, so 8 minus 2 multiplied by 180. S is going to equal 6 times 180. And 6 times 180 is 1,080 degrees. And now to finish, take your 1,080 degrees and divide by the number of sides and angles in an octagon, which is 8. And 1,080 divided by 8 is 135 degrees. So if you want to feel really smart, which you all are, but if you want to feel really, really smart next time you're driving with your parents, go ahead and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, or anyone else. Bet you didn't know the interior angle of that stop sign is 135 degrees. And they may look at you funny, but that's okay. Now, what about the heptagon? Well, S equals N minus 2 times 180. Now a heptagon has seven sides, so S equals seven minus two times 180, and S equals five times 180, and S equals 900. So we can take that 900 and divide by seven sides, and we get 128 point, we're running right the nearest tenth, so write this out to the nearest hundredth initially, 5, 7. So then we can look at our tenth spot, look over at our hundredths, and the seventh's going to round that 5 up. So my final answer here is 128 and 6 tenths degrees. Now, a 20-gon. Now, a 20-gon in geometry is called an isosagon. I-C-O-S-A-G-O-N. So those of you watching Jeopardy! tonight, if they ask you what an isosagon is, it's a 20-sided regular polygon. Either way, we have S equals N minus 2 times 180. Always start with that equation. S equals, well, our N here is 20 minus 2 times 180. And S is going to be 18 multiplied by 180. And you end up with 3,240 degrees. Now that's the whole shape. So again, we need to divide by the number of sides, which is the same as the number of angles, which in a 20 gon it's, well, given to you at 20. And that is going to be 162 degrees. So when you're looking for just one angle, use the same formula. Find the total measurement of the polygon. Then divide by your number of angles. Now something really kind of cool happens with the exterior angles of a polygon. No matter how many sides and angles a shape has in a polygon, the sum of the measures of the exterior angles, one at each vertex, is 360 degrees. So in our pentagon here, the measure of angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus the measure of angle 5 is, survey says, 360 degrees. That's true for a triangle, that's true for a quadrilateral, it's true, or true for our 20 gons and whatever. 120 plus 100 plus 140 is 360, and 105, 40, 105, 110 is 360 degrees. So it's one of those that it's just kind of cool. Now we're going to use that knowledge 
to find the measure of exterior angles of our regular polygons. Our example shows us how to do it for a regular hexagon. Well, if x is the measure of each exterior angle, and there are six angles in a hexagon, so there's six exterior angles outside the hexagon, 6 times x needs to equal 360 degrees, and you divide by 6 on both sides and get x equals 60. So each exterior angle of a regular hexagon measures 60 degrees. Now let's use that to help us with triangles, quadrilaterals, and octagons. Well, for our triangle, there's three sides, so we could say 3x equals 360 degrees. And if I choose to divide by 3 here on both sides, x is going to be 120 degrees. So each exterior angle in a triangle is 120 degrees. What about our quadrilateral? Well, we have four exterior angles in the quadrilateral. They're going to add up to be 360 degrees. So if I once again divide by 4 on both sides here, x is going to equal 90 degrees. Cool shortcut here, by the way. If you think about 36 divided by 3, you get 12. Put on your 0. 36 divided by 4, you get 9. And tack on your 0. Kind of cool. Octagon, 8 sides, 8 exterior angles that are all going to add up to 360 degrees. Divide by 8, and x is going to be 45 degrees. And if you're saying, oh, Mr. Richards, that shortcut didn't work here, well, what's 36 divided by 8? It's 4 and a half. And by putting on that 0, it's the same thing as multiplying by 10, and 4 and a half times 10 is 45 degrees. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.